All right, so for all you out there watching this, I am Mike from Adrenaline Armory. I'm here with Dave from the Wisconsin Death Metal Band, Mortis Cult. Hey, Ailes. Um, so let's start out with a little bit of band history, like you formed back in 1990. Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so I was just kind of wondering, I mean, I maybe started listening to you in the later 90s, so I'm not, I, I, even I, I'm not quite familiar with exactly how you started out and everything or, or where, how you came to be. Well, you know, we uh, I, I, we kind of started off before Mortiskull was really Mortiskull is I had kind of a crossover band, you know, MOD, SOD type stuff. And uh, we had, you know, I, I was just out of the military. So I was just out of the Marine Corps, uh, you know, just was like, just threw myself into it. I'm like, I knew what I wanted to do. I'm like, let's do this. And I was very determined to do it. But the talent level between all of us, really wasn't there you know we were all very fresh and green and and uh you, you could tell it but you know how else do you really learn by you know moving forward so we uh that band disbanded and i started another lineup uh it was going to be under the same name uh but these other like these kids i had were like so good you know they were just bad they were good and you know they said it's you know kind of a unique style, and that was the that was the uh, mortar skull, the uh, uh, gory departure lineup. Okay. And uh, you know, so we were going to be a different name, and then as time went on, you know, we had a singer, and uh, the singer unfortunately didn't work out. And um, I was not supposed to be the vocalist; I was just going to be the guitar player. I wanted to be like a, I don't know, like a you know Alec, not Alex Skolnick, um, uh, Eric Peterson, you know, like Testament. I just wanted to kind of be a guy on the side and just play my guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just so happened that, you know, I got kind of thrown into it. And basically what happened was, is we went into a wave digital studios down in Gurney. Uh, at the time, uh, there were a lot of bands like, uh, like Scott, we were talking about Scott earlier, his band, yeah. his old band, Sinister, yeah. I believe they recorded there. And, uh, uh, Dr. Shrinker had recorded there, uh, later on, uh, we, as well as we did, for, we did an earache compilation with them. Uh, so each of us did one song in that particular so my hair's bottom here. Uh, we, we all did, you know, a song. So uh, anyway, so Gurney has a long history. Um, Brian Griffin actually used to be the engineer there. And uh, he was the, he used to be the guitar player in Broken Hope. So yeah. yep. just yeah. a lot of, you know what I mean? And uh, Eric Greif uh, was our producer at the time. And uh, that was his, you know, studio of choice. Um, so we went in there and we, we banged out four songs and uh, really kind of learned, you know, how the recording process works. Uh, and learned how uh, just, you know, how, how people do it, you know, because a lot of people think, oh, you just go in and play. Well, you go in and play, but there's a lot of nuances to the studio. And especially if, let's say, uh, let's say you have a part where one guy breaks, breaks away or whatever. And, you know, in the studio, you're not you're not, not going to hear that. So uh, anyways, uh, so, yeah, so we really learned a, a, a the fine art, I guess, so to speak, of like the first. This is our first recording. So. We, we ended up doing a four song tape, Gory Departure. And uh, I just happened to like stumble onto the underground. Uh, I sent the tape around to the underground and it just started circulating. Like, you know, we're getting all these fanzines, you know, just like uh, kind of like the old Kinko's days, you know, guys were going to Kinko's and sampling their issues together, you know, and exactly. you're getting the issue. And, you know, it's basically, you know, a black, black print on white paper. And, you know, you're looking at the, the crude graphics and, all that good stuff and so it really started circulating and at that particular time after shortly after the demo we had a lineup change and uh the lineup change two guys that left so kevin zeitler had left the band and jesse rofritz had left the band and then jeff yeager stepped in and jason o'connell stepped in and those guys were uh just as talented but they they had just this Seemed like just a little bit higher level of like, hey, you know, we kind of it kind of notched the band up a little bit. Um, you know, Jeff had been in a lot of bands locally and stuff like that, and uh, just you know, great player. So um, we we actually started writing like right away, and then we did three. Was it three more? Yeah, I think it was three more songs and another demo with Eric. Uh, this time on the north side of Milwaukee called Mauer Brothers Studio. Uh, Pat, uh, oh, I can't think of Pat's last name, but it was Pat, maybe Pat Cunningham, I think. So he was the engineer, Eric was producer. We came out with that and we started circulating that and that really got a lot more attention. And so one morning 
I remember because we all, a couple of us lived in the band house together. Um, it was uh, Jason's mom's house. And uh, I had a call, I don't know, it was like three in the morning, four, you know, three, four in the morning. And, you know, hey, somebody from, you know, somebody from the UK. And I was just like, what? So I get on the phone and, you know, hey, mate, blah, 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 you know, hey, what's going on? You know, and uh, he's like, yeah, he goes, your demo is really making a big, big, you know, kind of a big splash over here. And, you know, we'd, we'd like to sign you, you know, to a, a three album record deal. And I was like, wow, because prior to that, Eric, we, Eric Greif and I, and all of us and the band had gone down to Grindcore Records in Illinois and we had signed a contract with them for, I think, two records or maybe one. I can't remember. And on the ride home, I remember, well, not the ride home, but once we got home, it was like, hey, yeah, well, the deals, you know, they're not going to do it. And we're like, whoa, like we just signed on the dotted line and somehow something didn't go through. So hmm. it was kind of a a blessing that, you know, eventually, you know, Peaceville, well, it wasn't Peaceville, it was Def Records at the time. So there was Def Records and then there was Peaceville Records, Def Records being a subsidiary of Peaceville. Okay. So uh, Johnny uh, Johnny K was like, hey hey you know do you guys want to you know, you want you want to you know you want a record deal? We're like hell yeah you know. So at that point, you know, the two demos are out there, they're circulating. You know, we're getting a lot of uh, you know selling just tons of cassettes through the mail. I mean, left and right, you know, uh, lots of mail coming in, lots of interviews, just things really started to kick up. And then uh, at that point, then we had started the process to write. Anger Means, which would be the full, full, full length on Def Records and on Peaceville kind of combination type thing. Because later on, we were signed to Peaceville and that kind of became their record. So, okay. So um, then I was going to ask you, so you, um, the Wounds Deeper Than Time, that was on Peaceville already, right? That in 2017. Uh -huh. And then you have... And then you have the newest one, Suffer for Nothing, it's on them. I mean, how might what kind of a deal do you have with them now? Or is it is that do you have signed up for one more album yet? Or yeah, yeah. We they yeah, with this the last record was uh and I mean I hope we get to do it, you know, with uh whole virus garbage and stuff, you know. It was like uh really kind of I don't know how bad it really hurt our record sales because we're not out in front of people. And some people right. just you know, and that to me. I back in the day, the band never really toured. Uh, we played like maybe once a month, uh, but we still had that notoriety over in, in Europe, and people were still buying the record. It was a different era. It was mm -hmm. even though bands didn't tour, they still sold plenty of records because people were looking for it. These days, I think you have to get out there and you have to play in front of people because you don't know if you're, you know, some that first or two or three people are the first time seeing you so uh so i really think getting out in you know in the forefront and playing shows is definitely paramount and important um and, and i i like i said i haven't seen the sales yet so i'm really hoping they're not too awful uh because we really would like to 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 write another record um and so yeah we do have one more uh on this contract so far okay so um we had talked about or with, with the new album, like you said, you haven't played. I, I know you played a couple times over in Europe uh, a couple of years ago, and then you have you have another show coming up in the fall, right? Uh, yeah, there was we. It was all, actually it's almost two years ago uh, we played Europe, and um, the we had last year we had a uh, is it a fall tour in Europe lined up, and then we had a fall tour of the u.s and of course you know we all know that went away mm -hmm. um right now we're still slated to play uh three festivals over um uh i think one's in portugal and then the other two are in europe um nobody's canceled yet knock on linoleum or whatever this is made of here <laughs> um but uh and, and 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 i did i did see from uh like the kill town people they were like hey we still haven't gotten any guidelines yet to whether we can't or cannot do this so they're thinking probably mid-summer probably like maybe mid-summer they're gonna say hey either we're, we're going forward or we're not so um so i'm really hoping that that does happen um otherwise we are trying to line something up uh, maybe even if it's just the u.s um there's a couple of things possibly happening i i like i said every everything some sometimes things fall apart easier than they they get put together so um, we're really hoping to do something. Um, I know right now 
as far as shows, we do have some tentative dates. Um, I know there's going to be a, a possible Green Bay show. Um, and then we uh, are going to be playing, uh, like I said, hopefully – uh, we've been trying to, uh, we are actually, we've been rescheduling our Ohio. Uh, it's like Ohio, like the Cincy K Kentucky area. We've been rescheduling that gig like for almost a year now. So, um, we're supposed to be going down there in October. Um, again, we'll see what happens. I don't know what kind of restrictions they're going to have at that point. Um, we're just one of those bands that we want to play in front of people. The, you know, we, with the seated thing and the whole distancing, it's just, you know, we're a death metal band. We're not sticks or foreigner. <laughs> and you know, like, well, you know what I mean. You, you go right, see right. Sticks and Forward. Right, right. I mean, you're probably not going to be standing all night moshing. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and we want and we want that kind of environment. Um, so that's why we haven't done anything recently. Um, it's just we want that old school environment. We want to keep it alive. Uh, we we just that's that's what we want. Um, so if there would if, if if there are some restrictions, we we probably will have to cancel that. Um, other than that, yeah, not a whole lot going on right now. Like I said, we're still waiting on different states and, and see what they're all going to do. Some states may have nothing and some states may have, a you know, restrictions. So we just don't know. Um, hopefully we'll pick out the states that have none and go to those and, you know, ho hopefully you know, be successful there. Uh, but yeah, otherwise yeah, everything's kind of tentative right now. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about your, the newest, the newest album, Suffer for Nothing. Um, so how was, I was just kind of curious, like, how would you say this was different compared to, like, our previous releases? Like, how has uh, Mortis Called evolved, you know, since, since the last couple, or, you know, the last album and the one 20 years from that before that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, and it's really hard for me to say, hey, yeah, well, you know, I mean, I could be like, you know, yes, this is our best record. And this is, you know, and somebody may get it and say, like, oh, this is awful. So, I mean, it's all really a matter of opinion. Um I do feel though that this is like a really strong record for us and I feel like it could have um I feel like this record could have came right after surface okay um and it's it's just the production of it you know we we went to Chris Jurek in, in Bell City and he uh we we did a lot of pre-production for, for this and we sent him the pre-production and he's like you know what this 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 is what I want to capture you guys playing in the basement, the energy, this is this is what I want the record to sound like. Um, and I don't want to make it sound like, you know, we're playing in a shit can or something like that. I'm just saying, you know, the essence of of the guitars and the vocals. And he he really wanted everything to just sound like Mortis Skull, which which I, I really appreciated. Um, not to say that Wounds Deeper Than Time doesn't sound like us. I think it sounds like us. I just think it's a different production. Um, and... Not to mention, the Wounds Deeper Than Time material was written with two different lineups. Uh, Wounds Deeper Than Time. Well, you know what? Actually, I think Wounds Deeper Than Time. Well, John came in. John came in a little bit late. How did I think about it? So I guess I'm wrong on that statement. So everybody's forget I said that. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I'm like, wait a minute, what? Um, <laughs> no, I think I think the difference between the two records is I think Wounds Deeper Than Time was you know really. You know, mid-paced. I, I mean, I'm not saying Suffer for Nothing isn't, but I'm just saying I think on Suffer for Nothing, there's a lot more blasting going on. There's a lot more faster songs. Um, you know, everything's, you know, the songs, like some songs aren't super long and some songs are kind of a little bit long. So um, I thought it's, it's just different. And, and, and we really focused on uh, the tempos. So we really focused on, like, we didn't want – didn't want like I mean because there's some bands you could put their record on and you can like you know you a tempo you know yeah. and, I mean obituary yeah. is kind of like that I mean not and I'm I'm not saying that that's bad I'm just saying you know you could probably put a tempo in or a lot of similar tempos I mean and I I love obituary so I mean they're like one of my favorite bands but I'm just saying they have a lot of real similar tempoed songs mm -hmm. we want it to be different and so if we ran into a song and we're like oh same tempo. We're like, well, we got to change something up because each song is a totally different tempo, whether it's, you know, 180 or 140 PMs. It's just kind of it's all over the place. And the cool part about that was, is when we were putting the record together in the order, it's like it kind of gives you, you know, just like we did with Wounds Deeper Than Time. We sat down with the songs and we saw they flew you know, or flowed together. And, uh, you know, what does this song end like and what does this song begin like? And, you know, so all of that stuff. And so we did the same thing with this record. 
But I think the cooler part about this record was is the fact that, like I said, we had different tempos for each song. So it was really kind of cool putting them together and then at the end listening to the flow of the record. Okay. So yeah, um, one of my next one other questions you had with the the change in your lineup with John coming in and now you have, you know, Tim on guitars and stuff like that. And it was like yeah. how do you see any way like I mean, are they they're playing styles, assuming we're you know definitely influenced the the style of music and like how their way of recording and stuff like that. I mean, do you see that changing? I mean, affecting you know the sound for like the future of record or anything? Right. Um, well, John's been in the band for quite a while, actually. So he's been in the band since 2017. Okay. Um, he was our touring bassist for quite a while. And then uh, when the opportunity uh, came to, uh, ha you know, have him join, um, he, like, just jumped at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and ba so, so he's, like I said, he's been around for a while. Um, Tim, I, and actually, now that I think about it, Tim's probably going on, like, a year now with us. So okay. it's okay. it's been a year. Um, yeah, I, you know, they're all great players, you know, they're all great players. And I think like any other band that has an original member and you have other people coming in, you know, I think it's kind of, when I say it, I don't think you're going to lose much, you know, cause I'm, I'm you know, like, like, like for me, you know, I, I, I write, I write, I write, I write a lot of the songs. Tim writes a lot of songs. John writes songs, you know, Eric, We'll put in his input on stuff and drum fills and beats and stuff like that. So everybody kind of does their own thing, you know. Uh, but when it comes together, I think, and you put everything in the mix, um, I yeah, I, I think it sounds like Mortis Skull. You know, matter of fact, when Tim first joined the band, um, I, I don't know if it, I don't know how we I don't know if, if I think we were like, hey, you know what? Let's just start writing the next record uh, because we're not doing anything right now. So. Uh, so he came in, he learned like, he, he learned all the songs we knew. Uh, so he knew all the live songs. Mm -hmm. And then he came, he came to me one day, he says, Hey man, he goes, I got, I got this song. And I said, like, what? He's like, I got this song. And he likes to, uh, he likes to hand like full finished songs, you know, with like drum tracks and stuff. That's kind of like what he likes to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more of like a guy like I'll write, I like to write with the band and you know and kind of have everybody's input, but everybody you know everybody writes different. And not to mention, um, two you know John and Tim are from Appleton, you know it's like we can't get together every day. So I think the fact that we're we're not only that but we're embracing technology, you know, mm -hmm. uh, things like Reaper and stuff like that. Um, so. You know, you just kind of have to sometimes go, okay, you know, this this, this is what we're going to do. This is what happens. But Tim came in, got a full completed song, and I was like, it was like super, super good. And um, it just it just fit. It just fit. It's just a heavy song. Um, you know, and he came, he came, you know, a couple months ago, came with another song. He's like, here's another song. I'm like, wow, this song's really good too. So um, between him writing his songs and then uh, – since, like I said, we don't get together as much as we'd like because of the distance, um, it's kind of, I don't want to say forced, but it kind of has. It's forced me to write whole songs okay, uh, and, and kind of do that as well. So I had written a, a couple of whole songs. Um, mine are a little different. You know, they sometimes when I take, could take a week, could take a month, you don't know. Uh, but anyways, you know, so I had written a couple, he had written a couple, and, and John right now is like actually writing one. So everybody's kind of taking their little spin. And I think really what happens at that point is I think what we do is we take the song and then it just kind of, you know, especially with me being the vocalist, you know, I've, I've always been the vocalist. That's not, you know, you're going to hear Dave Gregor vocals. Mm -hmm. um, so what I really think is I think between the vocals and of course my playing style, um, I think that kind of, it kind of just, it kind of like evolves into more to skull. Do you know what I mean? And I, I think Tim's done a really great job of uh, capturing that, but yet kind of just a little different. You know what I'm saying his writing style is definitely different than mine and different than John's and Eric's, you know, so we all have different writing styles, but at the same time, it, they, it just seems to come together. And right now we're like on song number five and I'm like really happy with like all the songs, like they're all good in their own different way. And 
I don't know if anybody could really say like, hey, I know which one you wrote and I know which one you wrote, but I don't think they could really tell who wrote what at this point because I think it's all, like I said, it's just a, you know, and then in the end too, everybody just kind of comes together and it just kind of, you know, it starts, the glue starts to harden and everything else and then it just becomes this this entity. So hmm. I, I, I think that the Mortis Skull fans won't be disappointed with, with the newer material. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So since you haven't really been able to play much to uh, um, promote the the latest album, is there like a deadline of when you need to have like the next one out? I don't know how, if the record label just said, just we're going to sign your next or release your next album, but not really a timeline. Yeah, they, no, it, it's actually, that's a really good question. Um, Cause I know in our contracts, it does state a time frame. Um, they they reserve the right to ask for a record within I believe a year of the last one. Okay. So they have that right. I can't see them doing that though, to be honest with you, especially since you know everything happened and I'm sure the sales aren't as great as they want them to. So I can't see them like, you know, here here's some more money to go in the studio, cut the next record. You know, um, they could they could, and I think that's why we wanted to get a jump on you know with, with all this downtime. I thought, let's do it. But also, too, we took time out to learn two older songs off of uh, off of some older albums. Okay, cool. And so we took a look. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we off as humanity fades. We hadn't really learned any of that record, um, so we decided to uh, pick one off of that. And then um, I've been told in like a lot of you know posts on our page and stuff that a lot of people like "Dying Remains" the title track. So uh, we went in and we relearned that. And um, was just like, I, we, we just did a recording of it the other day, and I was listening to it, and I'm like, is this the record? Like, I mean, for me, I'm like, wow, is this the record? Or is this, you know, I'm like, is this practice? Like, I was like, wow, man, like, we really did it. You know, we really did a good job of, of replicating that. So, um, so yeah, so we learned a few older tunes. And then, uh, you know, like I said, just we're just going to keep moving forward and slowly but surely write. And then, like I said, hopefully there'll be some gigs coming soon and, Kind of the plan so far cool so i was just um just gonna uh, one of the first albums i had was dying remains and i had it on cassette so i'm oh, wow. I know, the, I know the, the cassette phase is like seems to be coming back more and more i mean is that are you are you, are you looking into releasing the newer albums on cassette at all or i mean it's like i don't know how you've been following that phase or what would you think of it i'm just kind of curious oh uh well, you know, to be honest with you, I have actually, uh, I've licensed out several of our uh, projects to, uh, oh God, one guy is uh, Scumlord Distro. He uh, he just uh, released the uh, Gory Departure on tape, which I received last week, and it looks great. Um, he's going to be putting out Prolong the Agony on tape, and then also serving two masters with bonus tracks on tape. So I have uh, a deal with him. Um and then uh, last or, or late last year, um, um, fate, fatalism, I think it's fate, fatalistic or fatalism music, I think, or sickness, I think it's called another label. Um, they actually did a cassette of uh, surface. Okay. So that's been out. So no, I'm following it really closely. Um, I I'm having a lot and, and there, and there's been others in the past that have uh, released uh, a gory departure and prolong the agony like over and over again. So I'm real up on the cassette thing. Um, people are, yeah, they're just, it, it, it's a whole different game now and cassettes are king. Um, also we're going to do a, a, a release of, uh, surface on CD again, uh, in, in Brazil. So it'll be a Brazilian release. So we'll be doing that as well. So yeah, it, the cassette thing, I, you know, I'm kind of excited about it because, um, like I said, I have all these cassettes now stocked up and now I'm ready to do a show and I want to see who's all going to buy them because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, People, I mean, I don't think cassettes are as big here in the U.S. as they are overseas, hmm. in my opinion. I know still some people in the U.S. are into cassette. I just don't think it's caught on. Like, I still think we're more in the, the vinyl stages here. Right. You know, right. like vinyl's still pretty big with the U.S. Um, CDs, unfortunately, have kind of gone a little bit down, you know. Um, people still buy them, but it doesn't seem as much. Hmm. Uh so yeah, it, it, I, I'm very well aware of the, the cassette, and and I mean, hey, if people, if that's a format people want, and and people are willing to, you know, do it, then you know why not? I I see nothing wrong with it. 
So um, speaking on like the tapes and merch and everything like that, I mean, I was, one thing I like to ask musicians in general is like, what's what's worked for you in terms of like promoting yourselves? And, you know, what have you ever run into anything that you've tried that hasn't really worked out very well? <laughs> Try to get your name out there. And you know, obviously you said you mentioned playing playing out there is, you know, one of the key, key things because people can hear you and become a fan of you and stuff like that. But I mean, in, especially in times of like uh, the COVID where nobody can really do much for like an entire year. Like, sure. How sure. do you how do you push forward to make sure you don't get you know lost? Yeah, no, and that's a that's a that's a great question. Um, back in November of 2020, the uh, we had the chance to uh, uh, record uh, some live songs uh, at uh, SV2 in Green Bay uh, while they were closed. Okay, and okay. Um, so it was. It's kind of like a live stream. We did, you know, we did edit some stuff, you know, as far as like the scenes and clips and stuff, you know, that we did edit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just because, excuse me, because everybody started doing the live streaming thing. And I was like, oh, man, I'm like, you know, I don't know, man. I just, I, I feel kind of weird, like asking fans like, hey, man, pay to see me play live. You know, I just kind of, <laughs> you know, on, on YouTube or, you know, and so I was like, eh. So what we did, though, what was really cool was, is we finally started our own YouTube channel. Um, and we decided that, you know what, we're going to, we're going to record like, I think it was like six or seven songs. It was, a it was, we were trying to do one song off of each record. Uh, but unfortunately at that time, I think there was like, there was like two records we still hadn't learned any material off of. So we kind of like, we're trying, you know, we did like, I think we did two off of Dying Remains. I think we did one or two off of Surface. I can't remember all of them right now, but, and I think we did like three three or four off of uh, Suffer for Nothing. So the idea behind that was because nobody really was able to hear us play any of the Suffer for Nothing songs. So the real idea was to get a lot of that like on, on video so that people could just kind of see us and go, hey, okay, there they are. You know, they, we haven't seen these guys in a couple of years or whatever, you know, so there they are. So that was really the whole main idea was just to get – you know get get have those people like hey you know so what we did was we put we put these um we put these youtube clips up on uh our our facebook page which we're going to do again this time we're going to do them without the youtube link because what has happened is um during the the virus and all that stuff and everybody knows about the political things that were going on facebook and uh instagram and twitter has really slow down the bands like if you're selling something you get flagged and they will drag your 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 hits down into the ground hmm. and we noticed that because like you know like one day I, you know i was like hey i was like what the hell's going on you know and i'm looking at the i'm like i put a post up just something simple in a picture and you know whatever it was about it was an older picture i put something up that you know went nuts you know two three thousand people likes whatever then all of a sudden I just noticed like our stuff wasn't going anywhere. I mean, we're getting like barely a hundred people hmm. like, wait a minute, this hmm. is weird. Like we have more fans on the page than that. And so I just know it even on, on the um, uh, not so much on the Instagram page, but, but YouTube and Facebook were in some kind of war. And obviously Zuckerberg doesn't want any of the bands to make any money. He wants you to pay to promote your stuff. Right. And it right. used to be very affordable to promote your band through Facebook for like five bucks. And you might get like, you know, 30, 40,000 people seeing it. But now it's more like, it's like 30 bucks, I think is what, like 200 people or 400 people. It's like, oh, he really oh, just, oh. He, he went nuts and he, and he really hurt the bands. And unfortunately, but what happened to us is he thought that this YouTube uh, was going to be a good thing for us. And we thought, you know, playing these songs and showing people that we're still around and this and that, and that we're still here and everything else and playing some of the new songs off the new record and have them hear that stuff, uh, uh, in a live setting. Uh, you know, uh, it just, yeah. It, I mean, the, the, I posted all seven songs and like a, most of them really did not do very well. I even linked them to other web pages and other sites that were uh, groups were affiliated and like, yeah. you might get two yeah. likes, three likes. So I'm like, it was really disappointing because, you know, I've seen other videos of other bands in particular and, you know, like, whoa, and it's same thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but I have mm -hmm. talked to other bands uh, that are on Facebook too. And they're like, yeah, they're like, our page isn't getting any, any activity. We're not getting any, you know, you know, just nothing. So I think it's kind of a shame. 
And it was really disappointing because we really put a lot of work into, you know, the videos and, you know, obviously we had to get somebody to mix and everything else and, and videotape. And so it was just, it was a little disappointing. I thought for sure that it would have a, have a, had a better response. Mm -hmm. Um, but at this point I know why it didn't have a good response and that's because of the, uh, internet gods are playing with everybody, you know, and they don't want anybody to be successful, but them. And if you're selling your stuff, well, you know, they want a cut of it. So it's, 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 it's definitely unfortunate. Um, I, we have looked at other formats, um, like rumble and, uh, there's a couple other ones, but we, we, but we really didn't, I, those sites, I don't feel have taken off quite yet. So we're still, you know, like, like I'm rumble. I don't really think, I don't think it's become like a band thing yet. We're like all the bands, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. usually like yeah. MySpace. MySpace, I felt was really great. Not only for fans, but it was great for bands too. Yeah. And you yeah. can put your music on there real easily. And it was a great format. And then Facebook kind of came in and kind of wiped them out. But Facebook and Facebook was not really a band friendly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Even though you know, even though they do have band pages, I just felt MySpace was more friendly for bands than Facebook is. Um, so anyway, so what we're going to be doing in the future is we're going to be uploading the clips directly to our Facebook page in hopes that it gets out to a wider audience this time. Because um, I think sometimes uh, you were you were saying before I know in, in, in uh, when we had messaged about you know uh, younger bands and this and that. I think what you have to really be careful of too, and I noticed this with, with one of the posts, the YouTube post, is that you have to kind of come off like you're not selling anything and like you're not promoting. And, 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 and you know what I mean? You're, you know, like, uh, like you know what you could do is take a link, put the link in, but like maybe put like a band picture and talk about like what you're doing this day and then just sneak the link in. Right. right and sometimes right. If you sneak the link in. The algorithms on Facebook don't know that you're actually <laughs> that you're actually promoting a video at that point. It's things you're just talking about a friend or some yeah. picture or something yeah. else. So it uh, yeah, it's it, you just have to learn. You have to kind of work your way around it, and then you have to find other formats. And like I said, right now, I know uh, Tim's been looking at all kinds of different formats, and right now we haven't seen anything that's really you no know, like taking off, so to speak, or not even taking off, but any nothing that's really like geared maybe towards bands mm -hmm. and i'm surprised that nobody has come up with a social media page for just music and just bands i'm really surprised mm -hmm. i mean i guess band camp you could kind of say but like i mean just like a general social media website right like right. facebook or myspace and just for bands you know right. yeah i noticed that, like you know just today when i put up the the photo you know the mortal skull the band photo you know mentioning about the interview tonight you know like I seem to get more response about that than if I actually put like a YouTube video to the actual interview. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like well, I put, I, yeah. And I shared it in my story and I feel like I got way more people like seeing it. That's another thing too, for bands out there too, is even, even, you know, even if you don't post a lot on your band page, putting that thing on your story is good because we're all going to see it. Everybody, your friends, Oh, your story, my story, you know, everybody's going to see that. So you might have people, or so, and the thing is now, as you got to remember, a lot of people don't have as much patience either. Right. They have right. 8 million bands that they can choose. They have, they have mass amounts of choice. So when you have mass amounts of choice, that's where the bands have to be a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, like you have, to, you have to think maybe outside the box a little bit and like, okay, what can I do? So a lot of times I'll share something to my story. I won't share it anywhere else. I'll share it there. But I know a good chunk of people I know or a good chunk of fans are going to see that versus if I would just put out a post. Hmm. So, you know, yeah, I haven't really messed with the whole story thing too much. I mean, it's just mainly just posting on the wall and sharing out, but sure. It's so, it, yeah. So. You know, the story's easy. It's just easy. And sometimes you don't even have to really say anything. You just put a picture or a, you know, like, um, uh, you're, you're, when you advertised us tonight, I just took that and it said, add the story. I added to the story and like, oh, hey, you know, matter of fact, let's, let's look at it and let's see, uh, <laughs> let's see. Cause you know, honestly, sometimes you'll get, you'll get more stuff that way. Well, come think of it, I, I've seen stories and I look at the stories, but I never really thought to post my own stuff there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I just post, I didn't post it long ago either. A couple maybe a couple of 26 people. So. You know, but then, but you know, when you look at these people, 
these are all friends and people that I know like the band and stuff. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, yeah. I just, I don't know. I like doing the, my story a lot too. I think it's uh, I think you just have to, I think you have to do a little bit of everything, you know, you have to post your wall, you have to keep your story. And, and the thing I like about Instagram is that Instagram isn't like Facebook. It's, it's at least I feel, I don't know how other people feel, but me, I, and maybe it's cause I'm a musician on Instagram, but I feel like there's a lot more music going on you know like on facebook mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. some people want to use it for their platform some people want to you know they're political whatever this and that and i feel like instagram is more like ah, eh, here i am i'm having fun i'm drinking a beer what are you doing you know or this is my latest album what's your you know yeah. i feel like it's more yeah. music orientated in my opinion cool so um speaking of music one thing that we we're kind of talking about like in messages is about uh stuff that you've done outside of mortar skulls like you said you mentioned that you were uh kind of you did a couple like side gigs for in terms of playing so i was gonna what, what have you all been else involved in yeah um i i was i was lucky enough um wow this is like last last summer already he's um last summer uh, a band from michigan called throne asked me you know like hey you want to do some uh some backing so i was like yeah and it was a weird thing too, because it was right in the summer, and it was right when like Chicago was like pretty much like on lockdown. So I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving to Chicago in the middle of all this, and uh, went down to the studio and I laid down some tracks for them, and they uh, they really liked it a lot. Um, so I mean, it it turned out it turned out really good. It was it was it was a lot of fun for me because um, I just like doing that stuff. It's not my own material, so I'm not as close to it. And then, uh, and then locally, yeah, my uh, my um, my buddy Scott grew up grew up epidemic. They're like a, a light rock band. Um, let me do some some you know death metal vocals. I was like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do it, you know. And I don't know if people like it or not, but it's what he wanted, and he, he had some kind of a vision for it. So, you know, I I I, I thought it was cool, and I'm, I'm supposed to be teaming up with another friend here in town um, for a possible song he he's got a he's got a you know whole thing tracked and everything and so we might be i might be doing some vocals for him um but i'm really open to it um i like it i wish i was asked more um just because it's fun for me mm -hmm. um you know i mean i don't mind doing guitar work either if somebody wants that too but um i think a lot of times with me being a uh the vocalist they kind of hear that more than than the guitar you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. And, and and it's unique for me too because I can go anywhere. I don't have to like carry my voice in a box or something. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> guitars. You know, you have to carry with you and stuff. I can. You know, this is me. Hey, where do you want me? Um, and I and, and I do a lot of uh, also too. I do a lot of. We I go up to uh, up to Appleton every once in a while. And I do a lot of pre-production uh, at Tim's house uh, in his studio uh, for our songs. Um, so I mean, you know, a lot of the songs that we do. Uh, after we write them shortly, I, I try to, depending on the song and the difficulty level, um, sometimes it might take me a little bit longer to to, to figure, feel out the vocals. Um, but so far, it's been pretty decent. Like all four songs, uh, we have we were working on five. All four of the other songs are complete with vocals and solos and everything. So they're like ready to go. Um, so, you know, I, I just like doing that kind of stuff. It's really cool for me. And it helps me, too, to kind of stay on my game, but also... I can figure out the, the song patterns better, you know, because um, a lot of times you can you can play and sing at practice, and like, yeah, that's perfect. And you go into the studio and you're like, whoa, like what the hell changed, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. I think sometimes in the studio because you're so isol you you isolate everything, and you're like, wow, you know. So that's why I like to do pre-production personally because then it helps me with the vocals. And I can go, okay, I know where I go, you know, like I know where I can breathe. Cause a lot of times, you know, if you don't do any, like, like for wounds deeper than time, we mm -hmm. did not do any pre-production vocal wise. We did all the guitars and solos and drums and bass, but no vocals. So when I went in to do that record, I had a hard time with some of the vocal lines because just for some reason, I wasn't like breathing as I would when I played guitar hmm. and hmm. And I think there was even one song that I actually had to like have my guitar in my hand and sing because I couldn't, I couldn't separate the two. So Wounds Deeper Than Time was a little bit 
it was a little bit trying for me vocally. Um, so I was really happy that on this last uh, for Suffer for Nothing, we did pre-production on vocals, doing pre-production now. So this is just nothing but great tools to help me hone in the vocal deliveries and just really make them like a hundred percent. So that's I, I I I recommend that to any new bands out there too is to record yourself as much as possible. You know, if you can do it at rehearsals, I don't care if it's just something. I don't care if it's your, your your phone, but it just gives you great insight to how you sound, what you're writing, and like, oh, is, wait, that worked? Is that not work? You know, so I, it's just a great tool. So I recommend that to all, any and all bands. If if they don't do it, they they should you know try. Okay. Um, one other thing. One one thing. I was gonna do a little bit more homework before I, before I called you. Um, I was gonna try and like read through some of the lyrics and stuff with that. Um. In terms of lyrical content, like how do you usually go about coming up with lyrics for the songs? Um, you know, for me, it's always been uh, I kind of go back to this whole thing. Uh, Rife had always told me, like, write what you know about, you know, write what you know about, not what you don't know about. You know, um, when, when we first started, when we first started uh, doing this, um, I wanted to write about, you know, the guts and gore and, you know, cannibal corpse and autopsy type stuff. And after Dying Remains, I kind of just was like, wow, man, like, I honestly, I don't know anything about that shit. You know, I mean, you know, I know, I mean, really don't. I mean, it's like, I don't know, man. I mean, and, and I'm not trying to, like, downplay anybody or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, when I hear a lyric like, you know, whatever, I'll saw your leg off or whatever. I'm like, does that person really know how to saw a, leg, saw a leg off? Have they ever sawed a leg off? You know, I mean, no, they haven't, you know? So, and, and, and I mean, like I say, to each their own. I mean, dude, Campbell Corpse obviously is one of the top premier bands and their lyrical content is what people want to hear. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, and, and I commend them. They're like one of my other favorite bands. So, I mean, it works for them. But for me, it didn't work for me because I was just like, you know what? This isn't really me. I was more of like a Chuck from death kind of guy. I love that kind of, I mean, don't get, like I said, don't get me wrong. I love obituary. I love entombed. I love napalm death. I, you know, morbid angel. I love all those bands, but Glee, I had to find out, you know, what, what worked for me. And when I first heard leprosy, even though he was kind of at that stage where he was kind of writing a little bit about the guts and gore, it's just the way he said it was like, I was like, wow. I was like, this guy really knows, you know what I mean? I was, I was like, I just gravitated. I gravitated towards it. So uh, any of the death stuff, I just kind of really started like analyzing it and, you know, just taking it all in and, you know, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, I love other bands too. I love Testament and, you know, Exodus and stuff like that. So, the, the lyrical content with those bands are completely different. Um, I wanted to write about what, what I knew about. And since I have had, uh, I had a, a very hard upbringing uh, as far as uh, not really having, well, anyways, uh, just a lot of abuse going on in my, in my family. Um, I kind of, you know, I feel like as I, I was getting older, I, I feel like I was becoming quite angry and not knowing how to deal with the anger. And I think when I, stumbled on a death metal it was like wow this is such a great outlet for me um and i could write about whatever i wanted to so a lot of uh, there's a lot of hitting me hidden meanings in my earlier lyrics um there's a lot of uh actually touched on a lot of the the, the abuse that i was going through um but like not making it very apparent um and then after and this is before but before that what like even off the prolong the agony demo and stuff eric was like, you know, you need to write about what you know, you know. Um, you need to read the newspaper, you know, look at the current events and this and that. So I started doing that, but I was actually going through a divorce at the time. I was going through a custody battle, and that really, like, scarred me really bad. Like, I, e even till this day, uh, my ex, which is the mother of my two children, I, I just still to this day, I just have such a, it's just an awful relationship with this person. And um, it's too bad that they can't see things. But regardless of that, a lot of my stuff is written a lot about going through the, the custody battle, going through the feelings, uh, you know, taking my kid home on a weekend where I don't want to take my kid home on a weekend and then having to deal with the, uh, the guilt 
and then deal with the remorse and then deal with the, 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 the happy and the angry and the, you know, all of that mixed together. Um, so most of my records are written about my life personally. It may not be very blatant, like, Hey, this is Dave's life. Um, but most of them, I, well, I should say most, all of it, all of it is, 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 is about what I'm going through or what I see. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, wounds deeper than time is a very classic example of, uh, you know, my mother and I have never had a very good relationship from day one. And, uh, and not to mention that, but just, I had been going through a couple of, uh, a couple of, uh, with some ex band members, I, you know, had some, a lot of animosity going on and, uh, you know, it was like wounds deeper than time, you know, or, you know, like how they say wounds, what is it? What's the saying? Uh, time heals all wounds. Right, right. And I kind of, right. and, and I kind of put a little spin on that. And I was like, you know, Hey, let's wounds deeper than time. Uh, you know, it's suffer for nothing has a very similar connotation. Uh, I have a friend of mine whose uh, brother, uh, passed away, uh, God, five, six years already now. And, uh, he, he, uh, well, he, he died from, from drinking, literally drank himself into a wheelchair and then literally drank himself to death. And, um, I remember on his, on his wall, he has, he has, he has a studio, he has his right. wall and he says, right. you know, he said, my brother shouldn't have suffered for nothing. So I was kind of like, so I, I saw that. And I mean, literally, and he's had that written up there for years and I saw that and I was like, you know what? I, I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to call the record that because I think we, as people sometimes put ourselves through a lot of needless suffering and we don't really realize it. Right, and, just, and, and, yeah. I, and, and yeah. And not to mention, I just felt like everybody can relate to suffering on some level, suffering, pain. Uh, and, you know, we all have it on some level where, 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 where your arm, your arm could be sore. You could have a loved one that passed away or uh, you could be going through a divorce or, you know, your kids are uh, telling you they hate you or, you know, whatever. It, it, could, it could be anything. So I'm very personal with my lyrics, but I don't like they're not very blatant, I guess. And. I like to think that some of the phrases that I write can be taken like either one way or the other. And that's, and I like that because a lot of fans are like, Hey, I like this. You said this and this, and I can totally relate with that. And so they took it and they made it their own. So I guess that's what I'm trying to say with lyrics. I got, I, I just, I wanted to make it my own, but at the same time, I want to be able to, you know, have the fans go like, Oh yeah, I, I can totally relate to that. You know? So it's just, that's my thing. I mean, like I said, lyrics are subjectable. Um, you know, they mean something different to everybody. Yeah. So, um, so you mentioned that you had the two kids. Are they following in your metal footsteps at all? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. My 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 I uh, my daughter and I are estranged, unfortunately. Um, and my son uh, is autistic, and he he loves music, but he hasn't caught on like the entire time. Uh, He's maybe picked up my guitar maybe once, I think, no, once. And that was like probably like, God, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So like maybe yeah. once. Uh, he does have a keyboard. Um, we did get him a pretty cool Casio keyboard. And he was kind of noodling around with that a little bit. And uh, uh, we, 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 there's one, he, we bought him one to take home. And then we have one here for him. So um, he hasn't really played on it too much. So music for him, he, he's really in more into the cartoon theme songs and, and, and stuff like that. And it's kind of ironic that he's really into that because um, I know uh, I had done a podcast a couple of weeks ago and they had kind of asked me a similar question. And I said, no, my kid, he likes to take the theme songs or what he'll do is he'll get on the internet and he'll take the little sound bites of the video game musics, okay. music, okay. sorry, music, and he throws it onto an SD card and then he, he puts it in his Nintendo 3DS XL. Okay. And then he'll like okay. play it and he'll like slow it down and speed it up. And <laughs> nice. so it's, it's kind of weird because that's kind of where I got my thing when I was younger. Um, I remember my, my stepfather had got me a, a cassette recorder, you know, the, the block, a big block, you know, cassette recorder, microphone, you know, cassette. And I was like, you know, I was a kid. I'm like, I don't know. What am I going to do with this? You know? <laughs> so I started recording. Yeah. I'm like, what am I going to do with this cassette? I don't, you know, I don't know. And I remember he got me a, uh, he had me a tape. He had a tape of uh, uh, a country band. So I was the only like music I had was that one tape. I took the blank tape and I started recording the uh, intros to my favorite TV shows. Uh, okay. I, I, don't, I don't know how old you are, but like I'm talking like maybe early, like, you know, like Charlie's Angels and 
you know, real early stuff, uh, you know, Mannix and, you know, just whatever. And I would take Wonder Woman and I would tape the beginning. I literally would sometimes would have the mic and like tape, like I'd almost have it taped to the <laughs> TV microphone or, or speaker, sorry, speaker. And, you know, and I got to get them, you know, high quality. And I don't know, I would just listen to him. I would just listen to him. So kind of similar to kind of what he's doing. So I don't know. But as far as like them actually picking up an instrument, I don't think any of them have or maybe will. I mean, maybe he might in the future, which would be kind of cool. But um, well, it's it's not like Wolfgang Van Halen, you know, or nothing like that. You know, they're not like, hey. But uh, so, no, neither of them at this point. But you never know. I mean, I, I, I didn't start playing guitar until I was probably like, what, 22? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it hit me late in life. So who knows? Maybe he'll, maybe he'll figure it out. Maybe later in life, or you know, maybe he'll become a programmer. I, I, I don't know. So I always started out like I actually would just record stuff off the radio because I started out listening to top forty music. You know, before I eventually sure. discovered yeah. discover metal, I went through a little rap phase and then metal and stuff like that. But sure, I was always, my my focus. Like I started Adrenaline in nineteen ninety six, which is or oh wow five actually. Actually, I, nice. I, um, but back then, I mean, that you, you were mentioning Kinko's before. I mean, the very first issue that I had when it was a printed zine was going to Kinko's, right. but I don't think I was even able to drive yet. I mean, my mom brought me. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, um, I'm trying to get lost on track of my story here. But anyway, um, yeah, so I was recording things. And I was like thinking at the time, my focus about like why I started promoting is because it was the underground and I wanted it to be not yeah. the underground anymore. I wanted like all of the pop music to be underground and vice versa. But uh, I was kind of thinking sure. today, it's like, what are your thoughts? Like, should metal ever be like the top music genre? I mean, do you think it's, do you think it would kind of destroy the whole meaning if it actually got bigger than any other genres? Yeah, no, you know, that kind of happened already, kind of. I don't know if you remember back in the day, I think it was like 90, maybe 91, 93, something like that. I mean, in between i'd say in between 91 and 95 there was that little phase where morbid angel had signed i believe to giant records which was a subsidiary of, of uh, warner brothers okay. and then entombed it was like them entombed in carcass or was it yeah it was something it was like it was like the the, the, the three the you know three bands and they all had signed to this like subsidiary of this major label and so their albums that came out were all like you know i mean you know just plastered everywhere i mean posters and, and and you know ads and all that stuff and i i, I want to I, I i don't know somebody may say i'm wrong and i could be wrong but i thought it would i don't know if it was swan song that ended up being that uh you know the carcass that was on that major label okay. um but i do but i do believe domination which some people don't like that album that's one of my all-time favorite more angel records but that was on you know what i'm sorry fans Everybody's listening. I'm wrong. I believe it was Covenant, I believe, is what they, uh, the one that was on the major. But, like, three or four of those bands all went to, like, a major label for, like, like a year. And what happened was, is some fans, I think, got kind of upset by it. And then some fans kind of embraced it. But what, this is the crazy part. And I don't know if this answers your question, but this is the crazy part is all four of those bands literally were only on like those majors for like maybe a year. And then like it all went, it kind of like, they all, they all like went back to their respective labels at that point. So I don't know if major, I don't know if the, the big, you know, the top 40 labels or, or radios, I don't know if they're ready for uh, the extreme metal and the music that we listen to, to become that popular. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, don't get me wrong. There is a lot of extreme. I mean, Cannibal Corpse is freaking huge. Right, Obituary, right, right, yeah. freaking huge. Yeah. So it's kind of a bad example, I guess. Um, <laughs> I guess what I'm saying, but I guess what I'm saying is these bands have gotten big on their own merits, not on on top forty radio or major labels. Right. Um, so but I don't, but I, I know what you're saying. Like, uh, like turn on JJO or uh, or the Hog or something, right? And hear like mm -hmm. you know, Blessed Are the Sick. I think is what you're talking about. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think the mainstream. I think. I think that's why they invented Sirius Radio was so that these extreme bands could have a, an outlet or a format. Um, like the regular people are ready for that because I think there'd be too many people going, oh, "What's this? What's that?" You know. But from what I understand, 
uh, from back in the day when I used to get like radio charts, uh, play charts, we'd always get, you know, people kind of, they just photocopy, you know, like, like you said, the Kinko's thing. And they'd send us the playlist of their radio station and we go, Oh, more to skull. Okay, here we go. Oh, they played this song. Cool. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times we would see like bigger bands like Slayer and Flotsam and Jetsam, like on the same playlists. So I think over in Europe, I think they're more even with that. You know, like you might be able to tune in and, and listen to Slayer and then maybe Cher will be on next or something, you know, or <laughs> Beastie Boys or you know what I mean? Right, I think right. they're more, yeah, I think they're more like a little more well-rounded than we are maybe here in the States. But I don't really think that extreme music has, I don't think it needs, I don't think it really needs that, to be honest with you. Because I think what would happen is I think you'd start to ruin the, uh, what I'm looking for here. I think you'd ruin the 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 just the cult the culture you know the culture oh, the, yeah. the you know, this is what we this is what we created because you know once you start doing the top forty stuff well people are going to start telling you what to play and how to play it and what mm -hmm. to sing and what not mm -hmm. to sing so I don't really think the extreme bands like Campbell Corpse I don't think you could take those guys and go hey we want you to say this next you know they would be like well you know fuck you you know whatever <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying so right, right. and and from what I've heard of their new record I hear it's pretty freaking awesome eric rutan um uh, which is like one of my inspired guys uh, I, I like to say um he's on it so i mean it, it's I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing it in its entirety but yeah i don't think you could take any extreme bands like this and go hey we're gonna put you on klh or you know or, or whatever have you um i just don't you know i think i think like i said i think that's where sirius kind of came in and i think sirius saw hey wait a minute we can do whatever we want. We can play whomever we want. And I think that's why they got, you know, so many stations so you can pick and choose, you know, and they've, you know, Octane and, and, and whatever you have you. Um, but even like a lot, but even like Sirius Radio, um, I had a subscription for a little while and I just didn't like it because it was like I had to constantly switch stations to hear the songs I wanted to. That's what I was doing. You know, <laughs> and, right, right. It's like, it's like Hair Nation, good for one. Oh, crap. Now I got to go to Ozzy's Bone here. Oh, now I got to go back to Octane. And it's just like too much switching back and forth. And I was like, you know what? This isn't worth it. I'd rather just load up my USB and stick in the songs I want to hear, you know? Right. So who would be on your USB? Like what's, what's, what's your, what's your, uh, what have you been listening to a lot lately? Ooh, ah, uh, good one. Um, <laughs> no, that's a good one. Um, I, lately I've been listening to some of this stuff's not brand new. Um, the, and, and I, Forgive me if I forget the titles. Uh, the, the latest Warbringer, I really, really like. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a big thrash guy. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with thrash. So everybody out there, I'm not down in thrash. I'm saying I'm not. It's not one of my, 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 you know, forte musics. But um, I do like their new record. Um, the uh, Judas Priest Firepower record is on my stick. Nice. Uh, the Michael Shanker uh, Immortal, uh, which is fairly new. Uh, as well as his older record, uh, Resurrection and Revolution. I like both of those a lot. Uh, I've been listening to the uh, newest Alcatraz, which is probably like two years old by now. Um, and then, um, what did I just get? Oh, uh, Grave Solus is on my on my uh, USB. Um, uh, Alice Cooper, his newest one, Detroit Rock Cities, is on there, which is a great record. Um, so those are just kind of a few. I've been trying to think of anything else I can think of. I think I think Covenant, more Angel Covenants on there. Um, yeah, I just and, and, uh, accept. I think I think uh, Rise of Chaos. I think is on there for accept. Helix, No Rest for the Wicked. I got that on there. So I mean, you know, I I like to I like to go back a lot and listen to what I used to listen to back when I was a teenager. And when I was right, a teenager. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Helix and Dokken and, you know, Rat and, you know, just, just whatever, you know. So, I mean, no, but I, and I, and I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a big Michael Shanker fan. Um, have always, always really enjoyed, like, pr a big bulk of what he does, um, as well as the Alcatraz stuff. So, uh, but I've also been a big Alice Cooper fan for a long time. And, um, and, and not necessarily of his rock. Well, I think we'll probably wrap up here. I'm definitely looking uh, forward to the new material whenever that gets out. We've actually seen you live again, too. It's been a while. I think I saw you in, sure. in Madison maybe like three years ago. I think John was yep. – might have been one of John's yep. first shows where he started playing, so I saw him up there. Yep. 
is that uh frequency in Madison. So <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That yeah, I cool. think you're right. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, that was a great show. That was a great tour as well. Yeah, no, Suffer for Nothing is out. Anybody, it's on all the platforms. It's on iTunes and uh, is it uh, Diesel and uh, wherever, whatever platform you, you you know you want. Uh, and there's a Bandcamp too for it. Uh, but it's it's Suffer for Nothing at Bandcamp. I don't know why they did that, but okay. so if you look at Mortis Skull Bandcamp, there isn't one. So it's Suffer for Nothing Bandcamp. Um, otherwise, Peaceful.com. Uh, you can go and you can order the new record. Um, a, what was really cool about the new record is like a lot of people ordered the CD and the record because the record and the CD are two different kind of layouts. Okay. Um, with with okay. the LP, we did more of a we did a gatefold with it. So like when you get the LP, you like see half of the artwork as where the CD has the whole piece on it. So a lot of people were ordering the LP and the CD, and from what I've been told. Peaceville does an amazing job of shipping. Um, like packaging is top notch. Um, and the shipping prices are like very reasonable. Um, I think my buddy said he paid six dollars for shipping on the LP and the CD yeah, together. Good. So nice. yeah, so it's 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 a really, really good deal. Um, they also have all our reissues. So Dying Remains, Ask Me Any Fades, for all eternity, <clears throat> excuse me, all reissued, as well as uh, you can get the wounds deeper than time, all at peaceful.com. Um, shirts, you can get, go to season of mist, uh, uh, season of mist is doing our shirts on demand. Um, also a DNA project. He's been doing a lot of our shirts. He'll be coming out with a suffer for nothing shirt as well. And then the band as well for us, we have brand new suffer for nothing shirts coming, uh, for, for live shows. Um, we've got a couple different new patches in, we've got a couple different cassettes, plenty of LPs, plenty of CDs. So, I mean, we're really looking forward to getting out there. Um, and like I said, we do have a Facebook page. So fans go to Facebook, Instagram, Mortis Skulled, uh, uh, is it Mortis Skulled Official One, uh, you know, Instagram. So just go and follow us and, you know, keep up on what's going on. I'm, I'm, I usually post pretty, pretty regularly, at least uh, once every couple of days, just to keep people posted on what's going on. And, uh, I mean, and I look forward, I, I thank you for doing this. Um, I know we played, uh, for, you, you booked us at the Crucible, which is a great venue, and I hope to play there again for you. Yeah, um, and uh, Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, the uh, Adrenaline Armory, so I, I appreciate you and them and all the all the people that make up the organization. And, um, you know, with, 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 you know, without you guys, I mean, we can't do what we do either. So it's kind of a back and forth thing, you know. We kind of help each other out in the scene and, uh, hopefully we'll uh, hopefully we'll get to see each other soon, and uh, you know hopefully play and 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 hopefully we'll all have a good time and 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 laugh about all this stuff later on. Awesome, yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks so much for your time and stuff, and we'll thank uh, you this and get it posted and keep promoting. <laughs> all right, I appreciate it, my friend. All right, all right. You take care. care.